My name is Patty Beverly, and I am the cheesemaker at Redwood Hill Farm. Most of us in the cheese department have worked together for the eight years that I've been here, and it's definitely a team effort. Either Eric, our other cheesemaker, or I add the cultures and lead the cheesemaking, but everyone works together to complete the process and to care for the cheeses while they're here in our care. The Camellia is a Breer Camembert style cheese with a white, fluffy mold exterior and an interior that goes from firm and crumbly when young to silky and smooth when aged to maturity. We start by filling small vats with the pasteurized goat milk. Once the milk is in the vat, we sprinkle in the starter cultures and stir gently until it is mixed thoroughly. After the cultures are added, we check the pH of the milk to monitor the progression of acid development. When the acid gets to a certain point, proteins are ready to be pulled together by the addition of rennet. Rennet is an enzyme that helps to bring the proteins together to form the curd. The proteins will start binding together very quickly, so we stir the milk well, but for a very short time. Once the rennet is mixed into the milk, we stop all stirring and use the shovel then to slow the motion in the vat to assure a proper set. Once the coagulation has started, we make sure not to disrupt the vat at all, but we carefully check the pH to determine when to cut the curd. The cheese knives consist of a metal frame with fine wires stretched across in both directions. The initial cut creates strips or ribbons, and the second one cuts through to form small cubes. The consistency of the curd at this point is similar to a firm yogurt and very fragile. Once the curd is cut, we let it sit for a few minutes, and you'll begin to see the whey separating from the curd from the cut surfaces. We want the cubes to hold their shape through the process and not to be broken apart during stirring, so we wait for the cubes to heal slightly before we start. By stirring, we move the cubes into each other to press more of the whey out of the curd. Once the curd is of the proper consistency and enough whey has been expelled, we'll begin to scooping it into the molds. Once the molds are filled, the whey will spill out through the holes immediately and will continue to drain slowly overnight. All of the whey is pumped out through a separate line to a holding tank outside the building where a local rancher picks it up to feed his pigs. The next morning, we unmold the cheese, and then they're brined in a natural sea salt and water brine. When the camellia comes out of the brine, we move it into the drying room, where it sits overnight before it goes into the aging room. In the aging room, the first signs of mold will appear at about six days. It starts with a short, fuzzy covering of a yellow or tan mold, and then followed by a more aggressive white mold called penicillin candidum that gives this cheese its beautiful white fluffy appearance. We wrap the camellia in a micro perforated plastic once the mold has become full and fluffy, usually after about 12 days in the aging room. This wrapper allows the cheese to breathe while it ages. Once it is wrapped, it is aged here until it is sent out in orders. The cheese will continue to age while in transit and our goal is for it to arrive at the store or restaurant at the proper point of maturity. This cheese can be enjoyed while young at three to four weeks and will have some softness under the rind, but it will not be as flavorful or as silky as it will be at six or seven weeks. Camellia ripens from the outside inward and takes six to seven weeks to become soft through to the middle, at which time it will have a mushroomy aroma, complex flavor, and a silky smooth texture. A slight hint of ammonia is normal as this cheese ages and is still enjoyable for most when it is just slight, but it will become overpowering by eight or nine weeks of age. The rind will begin to break down and turn orange in places. This is a natural progression of the life cycle of the mold, but it does result in stronger flavors and aromas that are not desirable to most people. We compare the texture of the perfect camellia to that of the perfect avocado. Keep that in mind. When it comes to serving camellia, we recommend that the cheese be unwrapped an hour before serving and allowed to reach room temperature to experience it at its very best. We make a larger version of the camellia called cameo, which is decorated with whole peppercorns and fresh seasonal herbs. We also make boucheret, which is similar to boucheron, California croten, which is based on the traditional French croten, and our terra is a larger format of the California croton. We also make fresh chev, which is available in the traditional plain, as well as in three flavors, garlic chive, three peppercorn, which is my favorite, and roasted green chili. We also make a raw milk feta, 
which is made only in the summertime when we have an abundance of milk. It's required by state law that we age the feta here for at least 60 days, but we generally age it for several months before selling it. We also offer a goat milk cheddar and a smoked cheddar that are more familiar to most people and are a good introduction into the world of goat cheeses.